presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the people were listening to Jesus speak, He proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem, and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, a nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He collected ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, we do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what he had gained by their trading. The first came forward and said, sir, your gold coin has earned 10 additional coins. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second one came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. He replied, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, Here, 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 here's your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you because you are a demanding man. You take up what you do not lay down, and you harvest what you do not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, To everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After Jesus had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's Gospel from Luke chapter 19 is a parable uh, that I suspect many of us are familiar with in one form or another. I'd like to point out, I think a key to interpreting the parable is in the opening and closing lines of today's gospel. Did you notice that Jesus was on his way up to Jerusalem and he addressed this parable to those that thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. And the close of today's gospel, after Jesus tells the parable, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. We hear today's gospel in the context of our liturgical year drawing to a close. And so this gospel is chosen in that context because as so many of our texts tell us at this time of year, we do not know the day or the hour. 
When is the kingdom of God going to break into our lives? Those who heard this parable thought that Jesus was going to be ushering in the kingdom of God immediately. And their understanding of what the kingdom of God meant was the Romans were going to be kicked out and they would be escorted into glory. And so the point of the parable, any parable, is open to multiple interpretations, but certainly this parable is another admonition to be ready for we do not know the day or the hour, to use what God has given us to the fullest extent possible. Whether we've been given ten coins or five coins or one coin, whether we've been given many, many talents, whether we've been given a few talents, whether we've been given a singular talent. God has given each one of us what God knows we need to achieve the purpose for our life, which is eternal union with him. So our task is not to look to the left or the right to compare what we have with somebody else. Our task is to use what God has entrusted to us to the fullest extent possible. Sometimes we look at other people's talents and we get jealous and we say, how come this person is so much more talented? Or how come they have so much more money? How come they have so much more health? How come they're so much more good looking? How How come, how come, how come, how come? The Lord says, the gifts and the talents that I've given you are enough for you to achieve the purpose for which I placed you on this earth, which is to become a saint, which is to let your heart be filled with the fullness of God's love. That's easier said than done, isn't it? Because we, we look around at everybody else. It reminds me of the little story of an elephant and a rat. An elephant was in a pool of water taking a bath, just enjoying that bath, when a little rat came up along the side and said, come out of that water right now. And the elephant said, no, I'm enjoying this bath. And the rat was railing on and saying, come out, come out, come out. And the elephant said, well, I'm never going to get any peace. All right, so the elephant lumbered out of the pool and said, all right, rat, what do you want? And the rat said, I just wanted to check to see if you were wearing my bathing suit. Such a ridiculous rat. But don't we fall into that trap sometimes of comparing, looking at others and saying, am I getting my fair share? Are you taking something away from me that is mine? And God's wisdom, God created us with what we need to achieve happiness on this earth if we can be happy with what God has given Today's parable that Jesus tells us is about three different men with three different kinds of gifts. Let me tell you about three different friends of mine, each of whom have different gifts. Tony was a very, Tony was a very successful businessman, made a lot of money, owned his own company, and he was an alcoholic. That alcoholism threatened to not only endanger Tony's life, but his marriage and his faith. He came to grips with the fact that he had this limitation. He simply could not drink. And so he joined AA, sold his company, made a lot of money, and has spent the rest of his time doing charitable work, giving of his time, his talent, his treasure. He volunteers generously of his time at his church. Because he's a skilled businessman, he's on the board of directors of several different organizations. And he has a heart for the poor. Because of his own brokenness, he realizes the brokenness of others. And so he works, especially with prisoners, those whose lives have been broken, regularly visits prisoners, works with those whose lives have been crippled by disabilities, and works to beautify his church, loves to work with his hands outdoors. 
Second person, my friend Nino, who's the business manager for Heart to Heart. After many years as a teacher, she became the executive assistant to the president of a road building company. She's an incredibly intelligent person and has an extraordinary gift for writing. As the executive assistant to the president, she wrote all of his correspondence. And now with Heart to Heart, she writes to all the people who make a donation, and she writes a personal thank you note, often reflecting on the scriptures, and writes an individual note inspiring them. This Advent, we'll be hearing her reflections, which I'll narrate, in the Heart to Heart series, Ornaments of Grace. Nina has a passion for justice. And so, so many of her reflections and so many of her comments to me are, Father Michael, are you preaching justice? <laughs> Father Michael, are you standing up for the poor? She's using her gifts and her talents to make a difference, even though her health is very, very precarious. She suffers from de terrible, debilitating asthma and is oftentimes racked with terrible back pain. But rather than falling into self-pity, she writes and she corresponds with those who are in many cases sicker than her. She visits the people in the neighborhood who are older and sicker than she, putting her own needs aside. Third person I want to raise up is Graham, who's a friend of mine. He asked me to become his confirmation sponsor here at St. Anne's Parish. Graham is a special needs person. I met him when he was first very young. Graham is not like most students. He had a hard time learning. His mother took a special interest and developed Graham's talents, recognized that he had an incredibly loving heart. And her mother, in fact, his mother went back to school to learn how, he, how she could best help to educate Graham. And now that Graham is grown and is an adult, his work is going to school and taking care of young children, being a teacher's assistant, reaching out to them. Those students love him because Graham is so gentle and kind and loving. They look forward to his walking into the classroom every day. Graham and Nina and Tony, each one gifted by God with different gifts and talents, their lives extraordinarily different, but each one using what God has given them for the purpose for which God has given those gifts. To make of this world just a little better place. To pass on that love to others and to, in turn, allow God's grace to transform them into the people God wants them to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heart to heart, hand in hand, praying for grace to understand. Spirit of Jesus, open our hearts to live and to love the gospel.